When we create projects using C Sharp, we're gonna have to create classes at some point because we use classes as blueprints in order to create many different types of objects inside our project. So in this episode, we're going to be discussing what exactly classes are and how we can create them. For the sake of this episode, I went ahead and created a small diagram to sort of illustrate how a class would actually look like if we were to create a class. Now, you should see a class as a type of blueprint. And based on that blueprint, we can create many different objects that are just copies of that specific blueprint. It's kind of like building a house. You know, you have a blueprint of how the house is supposed to look like, and then the construction worker can go ahead and start building many different houses based on that blueprint. And that's basically what a class is. Now I will be looking down here when I have to describe this diagram because on my screen it's over there, but on your screen it's going to be over there. So just so you don't get confused there. Uh, but as you can see inside the diagram, we have a couple of different things. Uh, first of all, I created a class called person. And as the title says, this is basically just going to be a blueprint of a person. So what we can do here is we can fill this blueprint with different fields and different methods. Now a field is a type of information. So it's for example, what is the name of the person? What is the age of the person? Does the person have any sort of pets? True or false statement. So we can fill in a bunch of information here. Now when we want the person to do something or something has to be updated about this person, then we use method. So that's basically what we do when we create a class, you know, this sort of blueprint, we create fields and we create methods. Now in a previous episode, I did mention properties and methods instead of fields and methods. The basic difference here is that a field is just an empty field that we create inside one of these classes here as part of the blueprint. Whereas a property is when we later on need to add some kind of value to it by actually using these fields in some kind of way. So uh, a property is when we later on have to actually use it and add some value to it or change something regarding uh, these fields here, just in case you got a little bit confused about that. After we created a class, we can create objects that are going to be copies of that specific class or the blueprint we just created. And we do that by instantiating the class. Now this has to be done in a specific way and I will show you how to do that. But just know for now that when we have a class, we can create many different objects. We can create, you know, one, two, we can create uh, a thousand different objects based off this class if you want to. It might not be good for the memory to do that, but we can if you want to. So when we have this blueprint, we can create many different copies and just fill in the information that we added into the class. So we can create a person based off the diagram here that might be called John. And John might have a certain name. He might have a certain age. He might have a certain number of pets. Uh, and we can fill that information into a new object and then create John based off this class here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now before we can actually get to create a class and objects, we also need to learn about something called access modifiers. And this is something you're going to be using constantly whenever you're going to create classes, when you're going to create different types of fields, methods, that sort of thing. Now what an access modifier actually is, is a keyword that we put in front of our classes, we put them in front of our methods, in front of our fields, in order to tell the program where we can access this specific piece of information from. And in most cases, we're not gonna be using all these different access modifiers that I'm showing here on the side. Uh, we're just gonna be using just about three of them, which is going to be public, private, and protected. For now, I'm not gonna to talk too much about access modifiers because we already talked about classes and objects and how to instantiate a class, but we haven't even tried doing it yet inside our code. So we're not gonna to talk too much about it, but just know for now that when we use the public keyword, it means that we can gain access. It is basically just a way for us to tell the, the code how we can access this piece of information. So when we write public, it means that we can access it from anywhere within the assembly. If we were to make it private, then we can only access this information from within the same class. If we were to make it protected, it means that we can only access this information from the same class or any sort of classes that is derived from this specific class. And again, don't get too much into it if you don't understand what I just said. Just for now, know that we're going to be talking about mostly public for these examples here, which means that we can access the information from within this assembly that we're working inside of right now. So as you can see, we're back inside Visual Studio. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to create our own class because right now we do already have a class in here, but this is the class that the program created for us when we set up the project for the first time. And the reason we don't have a public uh, access modifier in front of this one or just any kind of access modifiers, so we're to do this right here, um, it's because this specific class is what we actually run when we run the application. So we don't actually access any information from inside this class, it just simply gets run. So when we create any other classes, 
ourselves, then it might contain information we have to use within this class here when we run the application. So then we need to tell it how should we actually access this specific class? Should it be public? Should it be protected? Should it be blah, blah, blah. So when we create additional classes here, we do need to create a access modifier. And this is basically why we need to talk about access modifiers before we got into it, because we have to create an access modifier. So even though we don't get too much into it, we need to just briefly discuss it here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our first class, which is going to be a blueprint. And we're going to just go ahead and take the same example as we did with the um, diagram that I had. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a class called person. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a public class. And then I'm going to call it person. Then we're going to use the curly brackets just to sort of lay out that we have a scope for this class. Uh, scope is whatever is going to be within the curly brackets. It just simply tells it that uh, whatever is inside this scope belongs to this class here. Uh, so inside the scope, we can actually go and create these fields. We can create methods. We can, you know, sort of insert information that has to be part of the blueprint. So we can create a field we might call, uh, let's say, public. Uh, string uh, name. Then we could also create one that might be called public. Uh, maybe not a string. What did we have inside the diagram? We had an age. So this has to be an integer. So public int age. And then we also had whether or not we had a pet or not. So we can say public. Then we can say uh, boolean. So that would be bool has pet. And there we go. We can also go and create a method. So we can go ahead and say we have a public. Uh, then we have a method. We can just go ahead and call this one something like, uh, let's just go ahead and call it greetings for now because we need to just have some kind of name here. So we're going to say greeting parentheses because it's a method. So we need to add parentheses behind it because we need to be able to pass in information if we need to later on. Then we'd say curly brackets to give it a scope. Now there is something else we need to talk about here before we continue, which is the keyword called void, which means nothing. Now what we need to determine here is whether or not we're going to return some kind of value inside this method here. If we don't plan on returning a value, then we need to use the void uh, keyword. So we need to go up here and actually write void greeting. And that could be an example where we just simply write console dot write line. It's right there. And if we were to write something out into the console, I'm writing stuff into the console, but I'm not returning a value, which I can then use later on to do something else with. We're just simply writing stuff into the console, which is not returning something. So if I were to do something else, and again, this is just an example because I want to show you what void actually means because you will be using void uh, quite often. Uh, if I were to go in here and say, well, instead I do actually want to return a value. I can go in here and say that I want to, when we use this method, have a, let's say an integer called x, and I want to have an integer called y. And what I want to do using this specific uh, method here, which I could call calc instead to calculate something, what I could do is I could go in here and I could create a integer variable type. So I could say we have an int called a uh, number, and I could set this one equal to x plus y. And then underneath here, I could return that value. So if I were to return it and say I want to return number like so, uh, we also need to go ahead and add what kind of, because right now it's going to give me an error message because we're actually returning something, but I am using the void keywords, which means that we don't plan on returning something. So if I go ahead and delete this, and then instead add the data type that I'm planning on returning, so in this case here would be a integer, then in this case here, we don't need to use void because instead I'm creating a method that I plan to return some kind of data from and I do that with the return keyword and by not using void as a keyword up here when I create the method. Instead, I just simply write what kind of data I plan on returning. So I just wanted to mention that because there has been some discussions whether or not we should use void or not use void because I did show it in a previous example. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and just go back again to our previous method. And I'm just going to stick with public void greetings because we're not going to return any sort of information, but I just wanted to give you an example here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say we want to console dot write line. 
And then I want to give it some kind of information inside the console here. So what I could do is I could return some kind of string that says, hi, my name is, and then we can go ahead and just add some information here. So we use the plus symbol in order to do that. And then I can just go ahead and use some of the information that I have up inside our field. Now I know we haven't assigned any sort of name or anything to this yet, but remember this is just a blueprint that we're going to use for later. So later on we're going to start assigning values to this. So what I could say is I want to just simply say that my name is name. Then I want to add another string by using the plus uh, keyword here. So we're just going to, you know, attach this together if you could say that. Uh, I did add a space here if you just notice that I added a space because otherwise there's not going to be a space after uh, the name and the next string that we're adding in here. And then we can say and my age is space. Then we add a uh, another piece of data here which could be the age and then we just simply return this. So having this is actually a class we can actually do something with now. Now, of course, if we were to try and run this, it's not really going to give me any sort of information inside the console because remember, the one class that we do actually run when we do actually run this program is the one that is down here. And we haven't told it to run anything regarding this up here. This is just by itself sitting up here. So we need to do something here. So what we need to do is we need to go down inside the actual program class, which is going to get run. And in here, we need to instantiate the class that we just created up there. And the way we do this is by referring to the actual class that we created called person. So if we were to go up here, you can see it's called person up there. And then we need to give it some kind of name, just like when we create any kind of variable. So if we were to create a string or an integer, then we always write int and then the name of it. And then we do something with it, set it equal to something. So the same here, we need to create what type of data are we creating? Well, we're creating a instantiated object from this class up here. And we need to give it some kind of name. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and call it something like, uh, let's just go ahead and call it person, just for now. Then we need to set it equal to new person parentheses. Now, you might be asking, what exactly did we do at the end here with the new keyword that we wrote here? Well, basically, we just allocated new memory inside our application for this specific object that is based off the class you created up there. So now we stored up some memory inside the application so it has it for when we want to create this object here. That's basically all we had to do. And this is something we need to do every single time we want to instantiate a new object or instantiate a new class to create an object inside our applications. So now that we have an object, we can actually go ahead and start doing things with it. So for example, we do have some fields up here that doesn't have any kind of data inside of it. We could start filling that in if we wanted to do that. So if we were to go back down here, we could actually go ahead and start filling in that information. So we could say, well, we do have this object called person and I want to fill in the information for, for example, the name. So we say dot name is going to be equal to some kind of string because remember we wrote that it had to be a string data type up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to write that we're creating a name called John. And then I could start filling in the other information as well. So we have person, which is the name of the optic we're referring to. And then I want to fill in the age, set it equal to, let's say, 28. And then I want to fill in if he has a pet or not. So we can go ahead and say uh, person dot uh, has pet is going to be equal to, let's just say it's true. And there we go. So now we have some information filled in about this specific person here. Now just to sort of separate this, let's actually go and do that. Uh, so this is when we instantiate the object and then we start filling in information. And we can also, if you want to do so, uh, actually console lock this out because remember this specific method we created up here just simply takes the name and it takes the age that we have filled in regarding this object or at least the object based of this class up here and writes it out into the console. So if I were to go down here and just simply run this method that we created up here, I could go ahead and say we have the person object. Then I'm going to write the name of the method. So it's called greeting without S parentheses. And now it is going to write that out inside our console if we were to go ahead and run the application. And it's going to do that because we have the console write line inside the method and we're running the method inside our starting class down here that, that gets run once we do actually uh, start up the application. So we'll, we'll just say control F5. We'll actually notice that we have, hi, my name is John and my age is 28 inside the console. 
So this is basically what I wanted to show in this episode here. In the next episode, we're going to talk about moving around some of these classes in different files and creating some different directories for them, because this is also something that we have to do from time to time. Then afterwards, we're going to start talking about something called static methods, uh, which is a way for us to gain access to certain methods without having to instantiate the class first. And there's a different concept that goes behind when you do this and when you do not do this. Um, and we're going to go and talk about that in that episode. So for now, this is what I wanted to show you. This is how we create classes and how we create objects based off a class, which is a blueprint like we talked about. So hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next episode.